think the most important thing to know about this vehicle is there's no dipstick. You cannot uh, put extra oil in it without being a technician or a mechanic. Uh, the way to check the oil is digitally on the dashboard. Now, it's really important, yes, we know that if it's low on oil, it's a problem, but actually uh, overfilling these vehicles with oil as well puts too much pressure in and that also breaks them down. So the way we check the oil, when the ignition's on, it'll say instant information. Now, the oil level there is what's shown. So obviously, if you go to the left or to the right, that will tell you what pressures you've got in your tyres as well. And, and when the services are due and the and the ad blue it's 100 percent it'll give you an idea of how much ad blue you've got uh, but as i say the the main one is the oil level i'm not quite sure if you can see it all but that's actually full and it's not over full because there's a slightly darker area above it and these cords now look you'll see a, a difference straight away uh, First, first to point out, obviously the spine board's been swapped over from the scoop and the batteries, which used to be housed on all the other vehicles, used to be along this section here and they've been moved to the front of the vehicle, which has allowed us to bring the striker stair walker down to the floor. Here, we've had to put the spare striker stretcher battery uh, in this position, so that's no longer at the, foot, uh, the head end of the uh, stretcher anymore. Obviously a benefit from moving the striker chair lower is we are finally be able to create an orange dressings bag area. It's a dedicated area which all the other vehicles haven't got. Uh, also, great staff benefit. Obviously we've got lots of students out there uh, and the personal kit uh, is we're really struggling for it. So we've also dedicated the rest of the space in this cupboard to have a second uh, area, a staff locker for obviously the, uh, the student's helmet and the personal belongings and then the staff personal belongings as well. Coming over here, we've obviously just got the Kevin, the vacuum splits as normal because obviously the spider straps are now where we where we need them and the compact two chair is, is exactly in the same place, just a fraction lower. Uh, basically, we've, we're not having a tilt and flip anymore. It's a new Janie seat. So all you have to do to get this out, look, really, is just literally that. And it's there. And Th th these seats now, to get the same compliance on this vehicle, all have to have the sensors like you would have in a car. So if you sit on that seat, you must have your seatbelt on. Basically, we we'd like majority of staff to attend from this seat. And on that point of obviously hoping for this to be the attendance seat for the majority of the jobs, the, the, the uh, iPad anchorage point has obviously been placed here. And we also have uh, the point where we can place in the uh, USB cable to charge up any iPad as we're travelling forward if need be. Uh, we feel that we can put the patient's family member in this seat quite easily to just spin that round 90 degrees and let them sit on that with the seat belt on. We have uh, we have retained the isofix fittings so facing forward we can have obviously the, uh, the isofix fittings for the uh, car seats. So we've got the manga compressor now on the wall, it's on a, a charging bracket. Uh, it's going to be so much better for patient care. Uh, obviously, uh, we've had IR ones in the past where these have not been charged up, the cable's not been in, they've been going flat when, at the point of use. This here flashes when it's fully charged, once every now and again it'll flash. Uh, and, and obviously when it's charging up, you see all the lights lighting up. And uh, there is quite a few benefits from us putting that on the wall, which I'll go into next. We've put a clear plastic door on here and we've created a, a tra like a trauma cupboard and basically it's going to hold the splint, the trauma pack, pelvic binder, we've moved the cling film down here because we're not having uh, burns dressings anymore and the scissors so start at shift a quick glance to the uh, open cupboard and you can clearly see you've got all five pieces of kit in that cupboard there got more space now for the head blocks and straps and 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 obviously you can just have a quick glance at the starters shift and see that they're there the spider straps most staff put them in with the carry chair obviously they need to go in here now and, and as you can see they can be neatly rolled up and everything fits lovely there is a a, a little video on how to get these nice and rolled up on the workplace vehicle design group. What I feel is one of the biggest changes on this uh, this 22 plate vehicle is the 
the situation we've now got by lowering these uh, for the bariatric capability within EMAS. All 110 ambulances will have that lowered cupboard uh, and we have ordered uh, the Harrier stretcher for bariatric stretcher which literally uh, when it's placed in place of the stre the striker stretcher the wings on the side actually they extend come out to this section here we'll have an extension here we'll it's it's got battery powered so it raises the, the the best thing about this this type of stretcher is when it's raised it will raise with up to over 50 stone on it unlike the previous ones we had so we uh, we can raise that hospital up to 50 stone and then transfer onto the hospital bed unlike the the mega type so when it's set up like this it's just simply goes in it's tight and it locks in just like a just like a standard striker stretcher and obviously the benefits are it's not just about transporting with comfort it's we can then move about as we haven't with the central locking mechanism just as a, another option for you uh, this this stretcher will go in that same mechanism with this one like this and this one extended so with a bit extra width this will work in exactly the same situation when you actually need full width and you're using the hoist to bring it in because obviously the bigger the patient then you need the width for the patient there's a little bit of a technique we have to just explain just to get it in it's not a case of going in first at that end and then and then locking it in and we'll just show you you've just got to avoid the avoid the top end and go for this bit here and just get that in there and then it allows you to bring it back shove that end over and then lock it in position.